Uh, good afternoon. Thanks uh, for inviting me to speak. I'm Hans von Spakovsky, and uh, as the introduction said, I'm a senior legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Um, I, I appreciate the invitation to speak about the blatant, illegal, and morally reprehensible discrimination against Asian American students being practiced by America's so-called elite colleges, including Harvard. Now, you know, I've got these prepared remarks, but I have to comment on something that came up earlier when uh, Rick Sanders, who's done some of the leading work in the country on the mismatch theory and how racial preferences hurt the students who supposedly benefit from it, about the word affirmative action. Banish that word from your vocabulary. Because that is a word... That is a phrase that was invented by those who want to disguise what is uh, going on, which is blatant discrimination. Racial preferences is the accurate term because certain races are giving preferences in college admissions and racial quotas is the accurate term because Asian Americans are under a quota and there is a ceiling cap at these universities. Now all of you know that there is a lawsuit pending against Harvard University uh, for what is clearly a violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which prohibits discrimination in the educational setting on the grounds of uh, race, color, or national origin. Even though Harvard is a private college, it is subject to the prohibitions of Title VI. Why? Because it gets federal money both directly and through the federal financial assistance of students who attend school there. Now, Harvard's discrimination is not isolated. Uh, it is reflective of what all of the other Ivy Leagues are doing and what many other schools, like the University of North Carolina, are doing. And even, I'm embarrassed to admit it, my former undergraduate alma mater, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, which implemented these kind of programs after I left the university, which is frankly one of the reasons I never give MIT money when they call me. <laughs> and I won't give them money until they stop doing it. And I encourage all of you to do the same. Find out if your university, of which you are an alum, if they have these kind of programs in place, refuse to give them money, get involved in the alumni association of that university and try to convince others to also not give them money because that's what hurts these universities. Now, I also heard earlier from Scott Jasek talking about the quote unquote allegations that Harvard is discriminating. Well, I'm sorry, but the trial in that case was held last October. I followed it very closely. I read all the pleadings included in, in the case, including all the statements of facts in the case. And it is obvious, the evidence is overwhelming that Harvard is discriminating against Asian American students. In fact, Harvard's defense of this lawsuit was unapologetically defiant. And it really showed the arrogance and the conceit, conceit of its administrators who are proud of what they're doing uh, when they admit it. Because in fact, many of the administrators there, when their depositions were taken over their admissions policies, uh, developed convenient bounce, bouts of amnesia over what they were doing. Uh, they obviously have put in a racial quota system that has a, a ceiling or a cap on how many Asian American students they will accept no matter how good their credentials and qualifications. Now, if this were a fair world, the students would quickly win and Harvard would have a judgment rendered against it. Uh, unfortunately, the judge in this case Allison D. Burroughs is a very liberal judge who was appointed uh, by Barack Obama. She sits in Boston, 
where Harvard, with its enormous $36 billion endowment and its many alumni, has its tentacles spread throughout the entire corporate, financial, and governmental structure of the area. Uh, like I said, it should be an easy win for the students, but I would be very surprised if she is brave enough to rule against Harvard and beard the lion in his own den. Now, this case is headed for the U.S. Supreme Court. I don't expect a different decision of the Court of Appeals either. So the Supreme Court is where this decision is going to get decided, and with the change in the court and the new justices, we have an opportunity, hopefully, to finally stop, change, change the prior uh, court decisions of the, of the court, which have been wrong, and end this, these kind of racial preferences and blatant discrimination that is going on. Um, the one thing I want to do, though, is tell you a story, because I think it's important for you to understand the history of this, to understand what's going on now and what needs to be done about it. Almost 100 years ago, uh, Low, uh, Lawrence Lowell, who at that time was the president of Harvard College, wrote to a Harvard professor to explain that enrolling a high number of Jewish students would, quote, ruin the college by causing elite Protestant students to attend other schools. He wanted to cap the number of Jewish students at 15%. Remember that number, 15%. Now, why was this? Well, he was concerned because the number of Jewish students had been steadily going up. It was uh, 7% in 1900, and by 1925, when he wrote this letter, it had risen to 27.6%. He knew, however, that setting a quota on the admission of Jews would trigger opposition and resistance from Harvard's faculty and governing boards. So he got what he wanted by changing the admissions process and came up with what came to be known as the Harvard Plan. And guess what? That is still what Harvard uses today, the Harvard Plan. And what was the Harvard Plan? The Harvard Plan uh, quit, meant that Harvard would quit relying uh, strictly on academic qualifications and instead would have a rating system that evaluated potential students on their so-called character and fitness. It was this time of type of highly subjective analysis. What admissions offers, officers today at Harvard and the other Ivy Leagues call a holistic approach that allowed Harvard for the next three decades to bar Jewish students who were highly qualified academically because they supposedly did not show the character and fitness to be students at Harvard College. By the way, keeping Jewish students out was also one of the reasons that uh, universities like Harvard started using legacy admissions around the same time. The Harvard plan was specifically created to discriminate against Jewish uh, applicants, and today they are using that same Harvard plan to discriminate against Asian American students by giving them low personal ratings to keep them out of Harvard, uh, even though they have high qualifications and high credentials. Now, how do we know this? Because the evidence in the Harvard case showed that the admissions officers at the college consistently gave highly qualified, highly credentialed Asian American students the lowest ratings on their personal fitness and character of any group of students. This despite the fact that Asian American students are one, significantly stronger than all other racial groups in academic performance. Two. They have higher extracurricular scores than any other racial group. Three, they received higher overall scores from alumni interviewers than all other racial groups. You, know, you all know what I mean by alumni interviewers, right? It's graduates of the school out in the rest of the country who will do a first-time interview of students. They gave Asian Americans the highest rating of any racial group. 
and Asian American students received strong scores from teachers and guidance counselors nearly identical to white students and higher than African Americans and Hispanics. But when their applications got, get to the admissions office at Harvard in Cambridge, all of a sudden their character and fitness become subpar. According to Harvard, your sons and daughters have no character and have worse personalities than white, black, and Hispanic students. Uh, Harvard actually knew it had a problem. And that's why I say the evidence in this case is overwhelming. Now, how did they know they had the problem? Because in 2013, the Office of Institutional Research, that's an office inside Harvard College, actually did a study on the admissions process and concluded that the admissions office was discriminating against Asian American students. So now what do you think the Harvard leadership did about those reports that showed they were discriminating them? They buried them. They didn't circulate them. They did everything they could to erase their existence. And when the individuals who were involved in doing that research report internally at Harvard were deposed in the lawsuit, they all got a collective case of amnesia and couldn't remember anything about them. In fact, the assistant director of the office that did the research when asked about them literally said she was, quote, drawing a complete blank on them. Now, all you have to do is look at the admissions numbers over the past few years to see that they have a quota ceiling. Remember the 15% cap for Jewish students? The percentage of Asian Americans admitted to Harvard has stayed consistently at 18 or 19% now for many, many years. It went up slightly to 20% once this lawsuit got filed. Um, but this at the very same time that, as you all know, the number of Asian American students applying to colleges all over the country, including at Harvard, has been going steadily up. Now, to understand this discrimination in stark contrast, uh, consider uh, this. Like I said, MIT, where I graduated, to my great shame, imposed this kind of system in the 1990s. The admissions rate of Asian American students, once they put their system in, stalled at around 26%, and it's been at that rate now for the last three decades, 26%. Contrast that with the California Institute of Technology. Uh, when I was at MIT, we had this great competition, you know, between us and Caltech. You know, we were considered the best engineering and science schools in the country, and Caltech uh, definitely is one of the best uh, uh, engineering science schools in the country, if not the world. Caltech is one of the only elite schools that prides itself that it does not take into account race in any of its admissions, and it doesn't have legacy admissions. Uh, what do you think the, um, uh, admission, the, 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 the admission rate of Asian American students is at Caltech? 43%, almost twice that of MIT. Uh, this should come as no surprise, by the way, because the former MIT Dean of Admissions, a woman named Marilee Jones, who fortunately is gone from the school, displayed the same type of racist stereotyping as the Harvard admissions officers uh, have. When commenting on a Korean American student applying to MIT, she said he, quote, looked like a thousand other Korean kids with the exact same profile of grades and activities and temperament, yet another textureless math grind. So in other words, to MIT's former chief admissions officer, all Asians look alike. By the way, and because I remember, I think Scott Jasek was talking about how these complaints have just been about Harvard, you know, well, that lawsuit also revealed this. Twice a year, Harvard goes to a secret meeting with 15 other schools, including Columbia, Cornell, Dartmouth, MIT, Princeton, Stanford, 
the University of Pennsylvania and Yale to compare their racial admission numbers. The purpose of the meeting is to coordinate their manipulation of the admissions process to ensure that all of the schools have approximately the same racial percentage of admitted students. Um, the range in 2013 went from Dartmouth with 14% Asian Americans to the University of Pennsylvania with 18%. Again, compare that to Caltech's 43%. So it's very clear they all, all these elite schools have a cap on the number of Asian American students coming in. By the way, uh, many of these schools, including uh, Duke, Emory, George Washington, and John Hopkins, have all filed amicus briefs on the side of Harvard in this lawsuit. So every single one of them wants to be able to continue to discriminate against Asian American students. Now, the US Justice Department is not in the Harvard case, but they've opened up an investigation. And if you want to see the difference between the current administration and the prior administration, I'm sure you, you all know, there were dozens of complaints filed against Harvard and some of these other schools during the Obama administration when Loretta Lynch and Eric Holder ran the department. And what do you think they did about those? Absolutely nothing. This administration has reopened these. And in fact, while they haven't intervened in the Harvard suit, they have filed some pleadings in it. For example, uh, when Harvard came into the lawsuit to try to convince the judge to basically seal the record they didn't want any of these admission records getting out. Uh, the Justice Department came in and said, well, we would think it would be in the public interest to not make these admission records secret. Uh, they should come out. Um, all of this is, to me, clearly a violation of the Civil Rights Act. And the government has not been doing enough. We now know that they are starting to work on this at both the Department of Education. Ken Marcus is a great guy. You couldn't think of, I, I've known him for many years. Uh, there's not a better person who begin, could be in charge of that office. And I can tell you, I also know the people of the Civil Rights Division where I used to work. And the political appointees there are very interested in pursuing these cases. Um, what are these uni elite universities telling these students. And I will tell you, you can probably guess from my name, I'm a first generation American. You know, my parents were immigrants, came here in 1951. They met in a refugee camp in Europe. Uh, and the thing that they always told us, and I have two brothers and two sisters, was America's a great place. You work hard, do well in school, there isn't anything you can't do. And yet, <laughs> And yet what these universities are telling your sons and daughters is that no matter how hard you've worked through elementary school, middle school, and high school in order to excel in academics and extracurricular activities, uh, that elite schools like Harvard and MIT, what's more important to those schools is their skin color and their ethnic background. That's more important to them than dedication, hard work, and character. It's fundamentally unfair. It's a betrayal of what we believe to be true, that all citizens in this great nation are equal under the law and entitled to pursue their dreams and ambitions without being discriminated against. I, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is the new Jim Crow that is going on in these universities. Uh, what I would say to you is two other things. Harvard and all these schools justify this saying, oh, this is to, because we want diversity. I can't think of a more racist thing for them to say. Why? Because if they wanted diversity, they would want diversity of thought, right? Diversity of opinion. They are saying that, oh, the opinion and thoughts that you have depend on your skin color. And I can't think of anything that is more stereotypical, more racist than to say that. So this whole idea that, that this is why this is justified for diversity, when in fact, like I said, they're saying that depending on your race, that, 
that tells us how you think about things. That tells us how you're going to perform in math and science and engineering, which is just, I can't think of anything more racist than that. And they don't get called on this. All of you have a right to be angry about this. But what I would say to you is what you have to do is channel your anger into action. And that means trying to cut off the money to these universities, being as public as possible about it, writing letters, uh, writing op-eds, attacking these universities that are engaging this, making noise with the Department of Education and the Department of Justice. How many of the groups in here have asked for and gotten a meeting at the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice? Anybody? One person, right? Uh, and some people in the back. Every one of you, all of you, should be asking for meetings with the head of the Civil Rights Division to go in, tell them about specific cases, specific claims, specific complaints, because you finally have people in the Justice Department who believe in the rule of law and who are willing to pursue this kind of discrimination. And you've got to do everything you can to push them to do that. Thanks.